to uh, make a video for you Mac users and Hackintosh users out there um, to help you speed up your system say if you're not necessarily running the latest and greatest hardware which I most certainly am not on this computer uh, this this computer is a Hackintosh system and uh, it's still running on a core 2 processor and uh, the video card isn't the greatest and it's only on 4 gigs of RAM and I only have a hard disk drive in my system so uh, I'll find that many a times it doesn't ju it doesn't keep up to par with the requirements of running the latest operating system so I can I'll show you that I am currently running 10 11 6 on this uh, Hackintosh system I have here it's recognized as a Mac Pro obviously because of the SM BIOS but uh, I am on the latest OS version um, so the first tip I have for you guys is generally to just clean up clutter on your computer if you know you have duplicate files or files that you no longer need in say your downloads folder and and things like that then periodically uh, clean those out because the more free space you have on your computer the smoother it will run the next uh, next tip for you guys is to clear your caches now I won't actually demonstrate this for you but uh, every so often it's a good idea to clear your system caches and internet caches and you can do this manually by going into your library folders which uh, some of them are hidden but there are definitely applications that will do it for you uh, one such application is called onyx and it's a good idea to run those maybe weekly to monthly definitely not a good idea to run those all the time because caches are useful in general for having a smooth operation of the computer that's what they're there for but some over time they build up and can cause lag though uh, the thing with caches is that after you initially clear them you may for a short period of time run into a little sluggishness initially because your computer has to rebuild those caches but the point is to basically flush your caches and rebuild them the third tip I have for you is to run first aid on your disk so that's accessible through disk utility you can either open it from the spotlight or go to your utilities folder and your applications um, but and once you're in disk utility you just run first aid now again I won't run this for you and because I first I already have and uh, second then this video will take too long but yes it's a good idea to run uh, run first aid now one thing to keep in mind is that this first aid does not repair disk permissions um, I think in uh, El Capitan they made a change or Apple made a change such that you are not able to repair disk permissions through disk utility at least when you're in the main OS directly you you most likely have to boot into your recovery partition at least on my system it's because it's a Hackintosh it's not an option for me but I was able to browse on the internet and I found a terminal command that will let you run uh, repair disk permissions and that is I'm sorry let me just uh, open a new window here that is this command right here oh wait no it's not this command let me uh, let me actually it's this command right here I'll post it in the video description but you want to run this as a super user and uh, yeah basically once you run this command and hit enter it will go through and repair your disk permissions which uh, which you should do periodically again not necessarily not necessary 
to do it every day or something like that. But uh, generally a good thing to do from time to time on your computer as you install applications or files and move them around and such. Now the other tip sounds kind of the next tip sounds kind of obvious, but it's always a good idea to stay up to date. And uh, again, this isn't always a possibility if you're running a, a Hackintosh system. Thankfully, uh, the hardware in this computer is is compatible, and I am generally able to update through the App Store. As you can see, I recently did the the up the software update through the App Store. I didn't even download the Combo update or Delta update from the Apple website. I was able to perform the update through to 10.11.6 from the App Store. So just stay up to date if possible, which is generally possible if you have a newer Mac and a, uh, a compatible Hackintosh system. My next tip is to reduce visual effects. Now, if you're not a, you know, if if you had a powerful computer, it's fine. But if you find yourself running low on system resources, it's a good idea to um, reduce visual effects on the computer, and that is accessible through the system preferences. If you go to your accessibility, one option is to first of all, you want to reduce transparency here. And the second option I do is to increase contrast. This just increases readability, but when you click this increase contrast, it automatically does the reduce transparency. And another thing is to, as far as visual effects, is to change your minimize effect in the dock to the scale effect. And of course, also um, getting rid of the dock magnification um, that's up to again all of this is up to you whether you want to do it because it's your system right but uh, yeah just reducing visual effects like that and also um, getting rid of say flashy desktop backgrounds having solid uh, especially dark background colors re will will reduce the load on your computer and as far and again as far as the desktop is concerned uh, Reducing the number of files or icons on your desktop will also significantly help your memory and boot times along those lines as well. Um, next tip is to disable extensions. This is also accessible through the system preferences. What you want to do is go to your extensions and go to you'll have a bunch of options here but you can disable what you want uh, generally where you'll find most of the things to disable is in the today tab and you basically you just uncheck what you don't really use and uh, again that's up to you like I disabled the stocks the calculator iTunes world clock because you know I already have access to my clock at the top right so I why would I use that and I don't really check stocks that much and my calculator I don't really use the notification type calculator um, and I, I if I'm using a calculator on this computer I generally use the one from spotlight which speaking of spotlight you can also sp help speed up your computer by disabling certain options for spotlight indexing uh, such as I've disabled Bing web searches, bookmarks, history, contacts, fonts, and uh, things like that. I, I generally want to keep my files accessible, but other not non-necessary things I generally disable. And those will help to speed your computer up. Another thing that you want to do involves uh, the terminal again, is to disable your dashboard. Um, which has largely been replaced by the notification notification center and launchpad kind of uh, setup. Um, I will again post the uh, terminal command for this, but uh, this is what you want to enter into your terminal, and I will put this in the video description. But uh, to re-enable it, 
all you do is change the yes to a no and you will have your dashboard back but this command will disable the dashboard permanently and you just hit that and hit enter and it will restart the dock and your dashboard will be disabled and um, two more things that I have to recommend for uh, helping to speed up your Mac is uh, one to defragment your hard drive now this isn't a, an option that is available by default on your Mac you usually have to find an application to do this one application that I use for this is called iDefrag and it's a pretty simple interface um, the one thing is that you can't do you cannot perform a full defrag easily at least on a Hackintosh I found that it will not at least on my Hackintosh perform a full defrag because when you try to it will prompt you to reboot and uh, I, I'm assuming on a regular Mac that it would work without fault but on a Hackintosh or at least on my Hackintosh it does not work so you can uh, what you can do if you're unable to do that or unwilling to do that you can do a quick online defragmentation which defragments basically 90 to 95 percent of the files on your computer it, again it's not the most efficient algorithm but if you really are trying to do that and you're unable to do it on a boot time defrag what I do is either make a separate partition on your on your primary hard drive or in my case I have a separate hard drive hooked up to my computer and basically I use an application called carbon Pop copy cloner to make a mirror image of my current partition onto this drive. Now this won't necessarily make it bootable by default. It will copy all of the files including the uh, config.plist and EFI partition uh, area to this drive. But it's only bootable through your primary hard drive. So um, what happens is I clone this drive to my backup and the Clover bootloader still boots from my primary drive but this backup shows up as an option so from there I'm able to boot into my backup and from there I can run iDefrag on my primary drive as, as a full defrag and uh, most a lot of people say that defragmentation is not ne necessary on a Mac and for generally it really isn't but every once in a while again this is one of those things every once in a while it's a good idea to do and I found that I changed after doing a full defrag my boot time went from again because I'm on a hard disk drive and not a solid state drive my boot time went from about two minutes to a minute and 30 seconds which I think is pretty substantial for doing a full defragmentation and I also find that applications don't generally you know how when you open an application it bounces on the dock I find that uh, applications generally boot with less quote unquote bounces on uh, because I have done the defragmentation on my hard drive and my final tip for you guys is to have an antivirus software now it's not you know it's not absolutely necessary I would say but generally it's a good idea to have a of an antivirus software on your computer regardless of whether it's a Mac or PC Be especially because Macs are becoming more popular they are more and more becoming the target of malware and while they are somewhat inherently more secure than PCs it's always just a good idea to have an antivirus software and run a virus scan every now and again and I've found that an antivirus software has oftentimes blocked um, exploits on my during my web browsing time it will pop up with notifications saying that it blocked an attempt to maybe it may have been just like a pop-up for a, a uh, adware application or something like that but 
it still stopped it. And uh, those are the kind of things that if you if you do these, some of these are periodical things, others are options that you enable or, enable or disable. If you do these things, you will definitely notice a difference in the running speed and boot time of your Macintosh.